If you haven't done so yet, please pause the video and try to answer the question on your own first before listening on. For part A, we're going to use the principle of conservation of energy. And according to that principle, we take the sum of the initial energies and set that equal to the sum of the final energies. Now, initially, the box is at rest, and so that means that the kinetic energy will be zero. Also, the spring initially is unstretched, so that means the potential energy stored in the spring initially will be zero. On the other side of the equation, we have the final kinetic energy, the final gravitational potential energy, and the final spring potential energy. Now, we can expand each of these four terms using their respective expressions. So gravitational potential energy would be mass times g times the initial height. The final kinetic energy would be 1 half times the mass times the final speed squared. We have the final gravitational potential energy, which will be mgy, and then the final spring potential energy, which is 1 half times k, times the distance by which the spring is stretched squared. Now, since the box is falling by a distance d down the incline, as it falls that distance d, it's going to stretch the spring by that same distance d. So in fact, we're just going to come over here and replace x with d, which again represents how far the bread box slides down the ramp. Now, what was a little bit tricky is we did not know the initial height of the box. And what we're going to do is mark that initial height as yi. And we know that the bread box slides down a distance of 10 centimeters. And so perhaps it might end up about right here. And so what we're going to do is mark this height here, which will represent the final height, y. Now we'll extend a horizontal line over in this fashion here. And we know that since this angle is marked theta, that means this angle right here is also going to be marked theta. And what we want to do is zoom in on this right triangle right here. So we're just going to come over here and redraw that. And again, this angle here will be theta. And we know that the box slid that distance d down the ramp. So that would represent the hypotenuse of this little triangle that we're looking at. So that'll be d. And then we can find an expression for this height right here. And we can see from some basic trig that the sine of the angle is going to be that height there divided by d, the hypotenuse. And so if we multiply both sides of this equation by d, we can see that this little height right here is d sine theta. And so we can then see that if the initial height was marked off as yi, and that little distance right there is d sine theta, then if we subtracted d sine theta from yi, that's going to give us the final height y. So in other words, y will be represented by the initial height minus d sine theta. Now what we can do is distribute the mg into both terms of the parentheses. And then if we look carefully, the term mg times y sub i appears on both the left and right hand side of the equation. So if we subtract both sides of the equation by that term, it's going to cancel away. We could then add the mg d sine theta over to the left side, multiply both sides of the equation by 2. And so when we distribute the 2 to both the terms on the right, it's going to cancel out the 1 halves. Let's subtract kd squared over to the left, divide both sides of the equation by the mass m, and then finally to isolate v, we can take the square root of both sides. We could then plug in all the known values for mass g, the distance d that the box slid down the ramp, the angle theta, the spring constant as well. And when we carefully type that in, we should get about 0.81 meters per second for the final speed and the correct answer to part a. Notice, by the way, that we converted the distance that the box slid down the ramp from centimeters into meters. And that's why we have 0.10 meters for the value of d. Now on to part b, which asks how far down the incline will the box slide before momentarily stopping? So that means that the final speed of the box is going to be zero meters per second. So basically we're gonna set up the same energy conservation equation. So here it is once again. The only difference of course is that since the final speed is zero, that means this term right here, the kinetic energy term is going to drop out since if we plug in zero, it will cancel away. And so now we're left with this equation. We can once again distribute the mg. Once again, the mgyi terms will cancel out. We'll add the mgd sine theta over to the left-hand side. 
Remember for the value of x, that's the distance by which the spring is stretched, which is the same distance that the box slides down the ramp. So we can replace that with d. We could divide both sides of the equation by d so that it will cancel out on the left-hand side and then become just a d on the right-hand side. We can also multiply both sides of the equation by 2 so that the 2 cancels with the 1 half and then divide by k. And then we can plug in the known values for the mass, the angle, and k. And when we punch that into our calculators, we should get about 0.21 meters. And so this is the correct answer to part B of the question. Now, to find out about the acceleration, we want to look at a free body diagram of the box once it has momentarily come to stop and has stretched the spring. So here is the box on the ramp. And we know that when the box is on the ramp, there's going to be a component of gravity that points straight down the ramp. And that's equal to mg times the sine of the angle. But then we have this rope that's pulling up on the block. And because that rope is connected to the spring, the force present in that rope will be the same force that the spring is exerting on the rope. And we know that that force that a spring exerts on an object, which we can call just Fs for spring force, is equal to the spring constant multiplied by the stretching of the spring. In this case, that would be d. So these would be the two forces acting in the direction parallel to the surface of the ramp. We know, of course, from Newton's second law that the sum of those forces must equal the mass times the acceleration. Why don't we call up the ramp the positive direction and down the ramp the negative direction? So then the sum of the forces would be the spring force of kd minus mg sine theta. And that would equal, again, the mass times the acceleration. We'll divide both sides by the mass m so that we can isolate a. We could then go ahead and plug in the known value for k. Remember, d was the 0.21 that we had found in the previous part. And then we have mass, the angle, and then g. And when we plug in all those values, we're going to get an acceleration of 6.3 meters per second squared. And we'll notice that it came out positive. So that means that the acceleration is pointing in the positive direction, which we called up the ramp. And so therefore, the acceleration, it will be directed up the incline and its magnitude will be 6.3 meters per second squared.